In the name of the loving and living God who is creator, Christ and Holy Spirit. Good morning, church. I know I've already said it once, but I like saying it, especially on a Sunday like this. I mean, after all, we are church. This is church. It's a good morning that we're here together. And it just, hope, it just happens that the colic of the day and the readings and the baptism are all about church, all about church. In the college, it talks about, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. One thing about us is that it's important for us as church to honor those who have gone before, to respect and to learn from those who have gone before, to stand on their shoulders as we live our lives of faith. Grants us, grant us so to be joined together in unity by the, of the Spirit by their teaching. So we're also, we're also as church looking for that way that we can be brought together by God's Spirit of unity as we continue to go deeper into the faith. And then the last line. <clears throat> um, no, then the, then the last line is that um, be with you and the Holy Spirit, one God. So here we are as church, and the collect is talking about it, and the lessons are talking about being a part of a faithful community, and, and underlying it all is this forward movement, this forward movement into the future which to some degree is unknown. Um, there's that story about Elijah and Elisha. Elijah plops a mantle on Elisha and says, you're gonna be it. But Elisha says, wait a minute, I wanna tell my family goodbye. I kiss my mother and father goodbye. Elijah says, no, what is it I've offered you? I've called you to come and do this ministry and Elisha changes his mind and decides to kill the oxen, the family source of income, in order to, in fact, do what he, sent, he knows that God has called him to do. I mean, that was the cost that he paid and his family paid for him to step into Elijah's shoes and be a prophet of the Lord. In that Galatians reading, the final line is about um, being guided by the Spirit talks about, you know, the physical and the spiritual, um, but he's really talking about how can we in the totality, that is Paul, how can we in the totality of our lives be led by the Spirit? Well, the Spirit, God's Spirit, is not necessarily going to lead us where we think we ought to be going. It might have some surprises for us, but it's all about moving forward and moving deeper into the faith. That's the, that's the purpose of listening to the Spirit and being guided and led and shaped and formed by the Spirit. But there is a cost. We might have to give up some control. We might have to be a little more humble than we're used to being. We might have to, in fact, trust that Spirit more than we've ever done in our lives. And then, in the Gospel readings, that line which is, which is repeated, that Jesus set his face to Jerusalem. You know, he was there in, in foreign territory, but at this point he said, he'd made a decision, it's time to go to Jerusalem, and he knew what was gonna happen. And, and so he was moving forward in his journey, which, ultimately would change the world. So one of his disciples, one of his people who was with him, not one of the 11, but one of the, one, one of the followers, said, I want to follow you wherever. And Jesus says, 
do you really know what you're talking about? Do you know what the cost will be? And another one responds to Jesus' invitation by saying, yes, I'll follow you, but, but I first want to go bury my father, which is no quick task in the Jewish tradition, not to mention the emotional and traumatic and deeply troubling time a son would go through. And Jesus said, come, let the dead bury the dead. Another one says, I want to first uh, say goodbye to my, to my family. I mean, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with burying your father? It's something that we would want to do just as a human being. And yet, and yet the message in this gospel is there may be something else. And really, it's not an either or. It's a both and. I mean, still we need to do what we are comfortable and want to do as humans. But it's seeing those activities and making that decision through the lens of Jesus, so to speak, through the lens of the love of God. That's what the forward movement of the church is all about. And that's what this worship is about. So Miles over here, Miles over here is getting ready to be baptized. And Miles, your life is going to change. And it will change for us too because the beautiful thing about a baptism is not only is a child or an adult or a group being introduced, being initiated really into the Christian faith, but as we go through this liturgy, we're reminded of our journey. Maybe when it began and where is it now? It's a great time for all of us to sort of take stock and especially when it comes to that baptismal covenant. It's in the bulletin. I encourage you to take it home and go down the list and sort of say, okay, well, how am I doing with this? Love and respecting everybody, even people who don't like you. I mean, you, you know what it's like. That's the how of moving forward. That's the, that's the rubber meeting the road. Those lists of questions, the answer to which is, I will, with God's help, not just me by myself, but with God's help, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, with Jesus walking alongside of us. That's how we can most faithfully move into the future. There is a cost. And there's a classic book, The Cost of Discipleship, written by Dietrich Bonhoeffer, was written in 37, 1937, during the rise of Nazism in Germany. And he, it cost him dearly. But the book isn't just written about his situation, it's about us too. It's one that's helpful to be, re, to be read. For we on a good day, good morning church, when we're happy to be with each other, need to remember again and again where the churches have been and where we are now and what God has in store for us as individuals, but also for the church, especially this faith community of which we are members. May we rest assured that we are never alone as we worship and travel with each other and as we are embraced completely by God's love. I ask you to sit with this for at least a minute. <coughs> a reflection question. I'm going to keep time and I'm not going to fall asleep. What would it cost you at this moment? What would it cost you to be more faithful in your journey with Jesus. I don't, I'm not asking you to solve that problem. I'm asking you to see, to name if you can, what would you have to give up in order to be more faithful to following Jesus?